Initiative Pharma is a clinical stage pharma company, and we are dedicated to developing drugs for patients in need. And actually, you can say we have added on to that because now we also have proof that it actually works in the clinic. And that's a big step for a small company. It's not a preclinical study anymore. It's not something we have shown in animal models. It's actually something we have shown in patients. And this is a really big step for Initiator, and we are super happy about the results that I will show you some highlights of here today. We are a Danish company. We are listed on First North. Uh, we are, have good funding uh, running into 2025. And the current market cap is about 500 million. We have raised about 200 million. So we are looking good from the perspective of a company. We have Link and Adrigo as cornerstone investors in addition to uh, 4,000 retail shareholders. Our pipeline consists of multiple drug candidates. And today I will focus on putafensin, what is previously called IP2015, and we'll look also into IP2018. These are molecules that bind to a transporter, a reuptake tra re transporter of monoamines in the brain. So you can say, what is the difference? Well, as you can see here under the profile, I've actually listed that they have a preference for some of the transporters. So there's many transporters, uh, molecules out there, but they all have unique profiles. 2015 is very unique, and we have also shown that in the clinic from a safety point of view. Putafensin, we are using in two uh, indications that we have demonstrated so far in the clinic. That's ED, organic erectile dysfunction. We have the positive phase 2b data. We have also shown in a healthy volunteer study that we actually have good pain relief uh, with this drug candidate. And we have recently announced that in preclinical clinical models, we have actually shown that this compound will also work in what we call female sexual dysfunction, or FSD. This is not shown in the clinic, but of course we're looking forward to see if we can combine the sexual relief function that we see in men and also have a, a product for women here. Put a, uh, IP2018 is uh, what we have also generated phase 2A data on. They came earlier this summer. And that was in a phase 2A study in psychogenic ED. So this is patients with low mood or mild depressions and also suffering from erectile dysfunctions. So why is it, it's a modulation of monomines so relevant? Well, as I said, the, the monomines, which are dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, are really important neurotransmitter molecules. They are involved in a number of processes, such as emotion, arousal, mood, locomotor function, and also in specific types of memory. It's a validated target. So going after the monomines and modulating the monomines is something that's been done for, for many years for treatment of pain, depression, and Parkinson's disease. However, often when you start treating with these, these molecules that have been developed so far has had too much effect of one thing. So they created side effects. Too much serotonin gives you sexual dysfunctions. And this we see in people being treated for depression. We actually see that a lot of these patients actually, while they're taking antidepressive, experience sexual dysfunctions. So what we are doing in Initiative Pharma is developing a second generation of reuptake transporter modulators with a profile that is giving us relief, but not the side effects. And actually, the molecules that we have developed, the guy who made the chemistry is actually in the audience today, Dan Peters, who's sitting here. So he's, you know, he knows everything about these molecules. And ask him if any other molecules will do the same thing. And the question and answer will be no. These are unique molecules. So. As I talked a lot about erectile dysfunction, we see that more than 400 million men will suffer from this. We also see what, and what we are focused on is not treating the patients that already have a treatment. We are looking for the non-responders, so the patients do not tolerate it. And if you look at the segment of patients that do not respond or cannot tolerate it, it's up to 35% of all ED patients. And if you look in the segment of where Novo is treating patients, in diabetic patients, up to 50% do not respond to the current therapy. So maybe we have a potential buyer here in the audience today. But we're also looking at what, what can we do today. The only treatments today are injectables, where you inject albostadil directly into the penile, penile tissue, and you get an erection that's independent of stimulation. And patients do not prefer this. So we want to have a drug that stimulates the natural erection response. And this is exactly what we have. Really briefly, why do we have two drug candidates? Well, because the profile of erectile dysfunction is different. One is what we call organic. That is what happens to us men when we turn 40 and older. We get physically impaired to have an erection. The psychogenic has other causes. Stress, performance anxiety, medication induced, and so on. And this can also happen to young men. So we need two drugs because it's two very different backgrounds we're looking at. 
So looking at the erection response, what's actually driving that? That is dopamine. So when we see something nice, we're being touched, we remember something nice, we have an, a massive release of dopamine in the brain. Something good is going to happen. This dopamine is translated into the production of nitrite oxide. Nitrite oxide leads to the dilation of the arterias in the penile tissue, and thereby increasing blood flows into the penile tissue. So our drug works up here in the brain. So we have a central effect. We have also seen in the preclinical models that we also have a peripheral effect. So you can say the compound is dual acting in that way. The current compounds on the market, including Viagra and Cialis, are only peripheral. So they can only extend a natural occurring erection. We can initiate one. Looking into the brain, again here, just a picture showing the, with the cross here, the reuptake transporter. So when you block that with our compounds, upon the release of dopamine into the cleft, you increase the amount of dopamine and the time it's there. So thereby getting a stronger signal. Again, strengthening the natural erection response. Both putafensin and IP2018 are strengthening the natural erection response. What IP2018 is doing in addition, it's also increasing the serotonin levels to some degree, helping the people with low mood and mild depression. So in a fi fine and balanced way. So just getting into the recent uh, program we read out, that's an organic ED. This is a phase 2A. It's a randomized double-blinded placebo-controlled study, so everything is done to pharma specs here. 130 patients in, they come in for four visits, and we do assessments after each of the dosings. Here, of course, it's still a phase two, so we still look at safety and tolerability, and then we actually use the endpoint, the EEIF score, which is the pivotal endpoint for registration this drug later. So this is not a pseudo endpoint. This is actually an endpoint that the regulatory authorities has validated and has been used to approve other drugs in this space. So what we are doing here, we came up with these results, and we actually we met the, the primary endpoint. We see statistics significant on related improvements in intercourse setting uh, compared to placebo, both uh, and also to the baseline. And the results were consistent throughout the study. We also see that some of the other uh, measurements, you can say the secondary readouts of the table, we actually also see significant improvements compared to baseline. So baseline meaning here to their own response of the patient, what they had when they got into the trial. And what is really important, we also saw that the compounds were safe to administrate. So at the low dose, we actually saw that the side effects were the similar to placebo. So the normal, we didn't see anything you know, of severity in the clinical trial. And at the low dose where we saw the efficacy, we also see that the compound is safe to administrate. And this is really important because we are not trying to cure cancer. We are trying to cure sexual dysfunction. And therefore, it has to be a safe drug because we don't save life this way, but it needs to be very safe for the patients to use. So just uh, going into the other studies on IP 2018, this is the one that read out in earlier this year in the summer in psychogenic ED. This is a phase 2A, so there was only 24 patients into this. This is a three-way crossover, again, a randomized double placebo control study. And here we used, instead of using the EEIF end score, we used a retiscan. A retiscan is an apparatus, as you can see, we can, uh, we can mount on the penis of the patients going into this study. And then upon the getting the drug and seeing an erotic movie, we measure if they get an erection or not. This, of course, is a highly artificial setting. So you can say, as I mentioned, in ED, in psychogenic ED, stress and anxiety is not a good way to, to have an erection. And these patients, some of them are actually feeling uncomfortable. They need to go into a dark room and they need to watch an erotic movie. So, but again, in this study, we actually see that we get statistically significant effects. So we see at the high dose of IP2018, we see that we get an increase in the penile tumescence. We also see at the high dose, we see an uh, increase in duration of rigidity. And these are two key parameters for having an intercourse. And again, the safety profile was very fine with this compound. And we are very excited about this. We are doing the postdoc analysis of both trials now. And we'll come back to the market when we have that dose completed. So what about Initiator? Why invest in us? We have clinical relevant, statistically significant proof of concept data with our two drug candidates. We, are, we have limited competition. We are targeting significant unmet medical needs in commercial attractive positions. I saw the number of patients I showed you in the beginning. We are a very cost efficient organization, so we have money to continue doing the business development that we are set out to do with these results. 
And the management is actually still very much intensified by having a good portion of the ownership in the company. And in addition, I said, remember, now we just looked at men until this so far with these compounds. Now we also have evidence showing that both putafensin and IP2018 can be used in FSD. If you look at SSDD, so hyposexual, uh, active sexual desire disorder in women, anyone who wants to guess how many women are suffering from this? One out of 10. So this is a huge market. So if we can also show that this compound could work in here, we will actually have a compound that will actually both being developed for both women and men and providing relief with their sexual function. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the questions. Thank you, Klaus. Well, it's, it's good you mentioned uh, that you're also going into um, uh, female sexual dysfunction as well, because uh, um, I think a big question here is what does the market look like there? Yeah, so I said one out of 10 uh, women is suffering from AIDS STD. Um, if you look, if we, we, had, we split the women into two groups, uh, pre- and post-menopausal. Mm -hmm. If you look in the post-menopausal, there's nothing approved uh, therapy for these women today. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge unmet medical need. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look in the pre, there's um, pre-menopausal women, there's two products approved, but they are selling for peanuts. They are products with severe side effects. One of them is an injectable, and the other one you have to check every day. Mm -hmm. And the way we are envisioning using um, Putafensin or IP2018 is an on-demand oral tablet. So, you are, so the women are in control of their own uh, sexuality. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, just uh, looking at the more general aspects of the brain, I mean, when you're trying to regulate uh, monoamines in this case, uh, there's always a risk of uh, you know, disrupting the balance there with the neurotransmitters. So how do you get around this issue? Well, I can say uh, we, we thought a long about this when we started, but you, sometimes you also get a little bit lucky with the compounds. Um, so the group of compounds that then are developed originally was actually one of the interesting part was that they were looking different from the other reuptake transporters. They did not have a drop in blood pressure, as we often see these. Mm -hmm. They often, uh, some of the other compounds often induce, you know, uh, increased uh, locomotive functions in animal models. We did, do not see that either. Mm -hmm. So you can say these things are demonstrating that the compounds have a very specific effect, mm -hmm. but they also have a, a good effect on dopamine, where previous compounds have been very much focused on serotonin and also no yeah. So, So that is giving us a unique profile. Of course, we have additional safety data around these compounds, and looking from the, the clinical trials, you can see that the onset is not imminent. So when you take the compound, it takes some time before it comes in, but it's not such a big problem because the, du the duration act activity is in the blood for a long time. Yeah. So it will have a long half-life. So that way you can see that a lot of the compounds that give these side effects are compounds that is reuptaking fast into the system mm -hmm. and give an immediate kick, you mm -hmm. can say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, going to the, um, to the chat questions here, how do you see the competitive landscape? Uh, the area has been stagnant in the last decades, according to this person. However, yeah. there are some Scandinavian companies now in, uh, develop de in development in ED. Yeah. Yeah, it has been a stagnating market, primarily due to uh, Viagra and Cialis is generic, so the prices had to drop significantly. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in the beginning, we are focused on the patients that do not respond or who cannot tolerate. So we believe here we can obtain premium pricing, mm -hmm. at minimum comparable to the prices that Viagra and Cialis had when they were on patent. So that's the first thing. You can say that they, otherwise there's not been gen generated any new compounds. We don't see anything in the pipeline. I, I didn't mention it during the presentation, but we did not invent targeting dopamine for erection. Actually, Pfizer tried to do that back in the day. The problem was that when they tried to modulate the dopamine, they also got a lot of nausea mm -hmm. due to the profile of their compound. Mm -hmm. We can increase the dopamine levels without getting nausea. As you can see, so we are building on the validated trials that they did but now we have a safe compound. Mm -hmm. So we don't see a lot of com competition just for the non-responders and the non-tolerators. Yeah. So there we can say we are unique. We also know there's a lot of huge Scandinavian companies moving up, and it'll be exciting to see where they go into the clinic and start showing mm -hmm. safety, which is really important in this space, and also of efficacy as the next step, of course. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I see the timer there is expiring, so I'm going to leave it at that. But thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.